Hello, JD here with the High Department of Transportation in the Office of CAD and Mapping Services. And this video is going to go over how to set up MicroStation to work with ODAT standards. So, um, this isn't going to be an in-depth video. It's more of a overview of how to get set up and get started with ODAT projects. So, uh, to start, you need to download our standards. So, if you go to the ODAT homepage, you can go to Divisions, Engineering, and then the first one's Office of CAD and Mapping Services. That's where where you'll find this stuff. And then CAD Services. So I want to mention quickly that we have two standards right now, two sets of standards. There's the ODOT CAD standards, and that's our new standards. That's what we're updating. That's what we're maintaining. And you can download those right here. And this will download an executable file, and you can run the executable, and it'll go through and install install the files. Uh, I do want to mention that this ODOTCAD standard is for these Power Geopack Select Series 4. So, or Geopack Select Series 4, really. Um, if you're not up to that version of Geopack, then um, a lot of, don't really recommend using these standards because a lot of stuff just won't even show up in, in when you open Geopack. So, um, we do have old standards that we aren't maintaining, we aren't updating, but they're still available, and they're mainly available because um, if you started a project with old standards, then you're going to want to finish it for compatibility issues since the two standards aren't compatible with each other. And so to download that, you want to, under files, there's this link right here, complete ODOT STD standards, and, so, and this is the ODOT CAD, the same link as on the other page for the new standards, so you want to download both of those, and then for the old standards, you want to just unzip that file, and so then you'll you'll now have the new ODOT CAD standards and the old ODOT STD standards. So ODOT has, puts their stuff on iDrive, and so the intent is for these standards to be a kind of network, so everyone in your office hits the same standards files. You don't want you know multiple copies of it floating around your office. That's just not efficient. Um, you can install them on, on a C drive if it's on the laptop and you want to take it out in the field where you won't be connected to the network. But um, once you download them, there's the ODOT-CAD folder and there's an ODOT-STD folder and then the standards will be inside those folders. Now again, you don't need the ODOT-STD folders if you don't have any old projects or there's no need for them because everything should start using the new standards. And so um, with the new standards, um, the other thing you have is where you're going to store all your project data. And so, you know, we have a standard folder structure for where your project should be stored for each project. And uh, that is, those should be stored, Rodot recommends, in a project data folder. So inside a project data folder is kind of the folder directory for each each project. And so you'll see there's PID folders, which hopefully you guys know what PID is. It's a project identifier for... So, our unique project identifier. Um, and then inside the PID folder, you will see these folders. And these are our standard folder structures that should be followed for all projects. Another thing I wanted to mention is this project PCF folder. So, you're going to want to create both these folders. The project with the ODOTCAD standards, we are we move to project specific configuration variables. So, uh, each project has specific variables defined for that project like a coin system like a specific coin system being assigned and so these files are stored in the project PCF folder and so there's a PCF file for each project that gets created and we have a utility to create create a project to do this for you so it doesn't seem so cumbersome or confusing so just wanted to mention that and so you'll see there's some project specific stuff being defined. Now the old standards does not have that. It does not have project specific variables. So for the old standards, you, you still, if you are using them, you you want to make sure that you keep those projects separate from from the new standards. So I would suggest creating a projects folder for old standards and that's where you would put you know, project data stuff for the old standards. Because there are some compatibility issues and you want to make sure you keep them separate. Okay, so how do I get MicroStation to load our CAD standards? So 
Um, it's it's really easy. We created a utility to do almost all the work for you. So uh, if you go inside the ODOT folder, standards, the ODOT folder, utilities, there's this ODOT CAD and our client configuration tool. So launch that, and this will oh, this application will open it up. And this application basically does all the configuration for you. And so um, there's two options at the start. There's network configuration and local configuration. So in the the local configuration is kind of for set up for you know laptop. You want to configure your stuff for your laptop, and you want to take it out in the field, and you won't have network access, and you still want to get to the standards and and whatnot. So um, you would just switch to that, and it can configure everything to your C drive. And you want to make sure you set these folders, which I'll go over here in a second. So on the network configuration, uh, the, there's this first part is for the new standards, and this bottom part is for the old standards. So if you're not installing the old standards, then just uncheck that button and you don't have to worry about it. So um, for the new standards, there's ODOT CAD location. So like I said before, ODOT puts their stuff on an iDrive. So whatever, wherever you guys are putting your CAD standards, you know, put it there and make sure this is set to that location. Then use your preferences. So ODOT uh, every user has a W drive, and that's kind of their personal drive. And so we're going to store the user preferences on that W drive. And um, what we recommend is putting it in ODOT CAD under bar user folder. And so if that isn't created, then you know I would suggest creating it and then using this button to select that folder. So that's telling it where am I going to store my user preferences. And then the next part, the project PCF, which I just explained, you know, where is your project PCF folder located? Uh, it's recommended that you put it at the same um, location as ODOT CAD folder, just or or not the ODOT CAD folder. Sorry, it's recommended that you put it at the same location as the project data folder. That way, they're just kind of right by each other. Um, so that's what you want to set for the new standards. If you are configuring the old standards, you just want to say, "Hey, here's where my my standards folder is," and then here's where my user preference folder is for the old standards. So, so we recommend making your ODOT VADI STD under bar user folder wherever you want to store the user preferences. And so and the last option is do you want to create desktop shortcuts which I already have them created right here so I'm not going to recreate them. So then once all that's set you just want to configure client for ODOT configuration. You hit that it's going to say hey warning I'm going to delete everything out of your seat temp folder. I'm going to clear everything out of your user preference folder that you told me here. And if you are configuring the old standards, it'll clear everything out of out of that user preference folder as well. And then it's going to take our standards and put our default user preferences there for a starting point for you. So I hit OK. And it'll go through and it's going to do all that and it does all the, all the hard work for you. So now you are configured to use ODOT standards. So I'm going to close that because we don't need that anymore. So these four icons, you'll notice if you checked them on, got created. If not, then they didn't get created. So these top two, say O.CAD, is bound to say O.V.A.I.S.T.D. So it says exactly what it is. If you use these icons, you're going to open MicroStation with O.CAD standards loaded. If you use these bottom ones, it's going to open it with those old V.A.I. STD standards loaded. I do want to mention that ODOT um, did implement uh, a start menu folder. So, you know, under start menu, we do have an ODOT CAD folder with a bunch of links, and there's our, those same icons. If you just open MicroStation, like say from the Bentley folder, you're not going to get um, ODOT standards. You're going to get Bentley's, you know, workspace. So if you use, you know, this icon, you're not going to get ODOT standards. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that part. Um, so that start menu I was talking about, if you guys wanted, as an office, wanted to implement that, we do have it in the ODOT CAD standards. So if we go here to ODOT folder, um, project tools, nope, wait, not project tools. Start menu, right there inside the start menu. There's our CAD folder. Here's there's everything 
that we put. So if you guys as an office, you wanted to, to implement something like that, there's where it is. And um, I'm sure you guys know how you guys are gonna need your IT people to be able to do that because I'm sure you don't, you might not allow your users to to modify that themselves. And um, you know, when we do release, we do have uh, quarterly updates to our standards. And so every quarter, you want to make sure you download the updates. And with that, if I go back to our cat services page there's this uh, cat standards update this is the pdf that will go through all the updates that we made from the previous release of our standards and so you'd want to make sure you check that out and if we did make a change to something inside the start menu then you know that if you guys implement into the start menu that you guys will want to push out that change or update so you guys stay in sync with what we have you don't have to do that just saying it's there that's what we did so now that you know how to, and now that MicroStation is configured, I, next thing, if you don't really know what you're doing, is is getting a project started. So with the ODOT CAD standards, we did develop uh, an application that will create your folder structure for you for a new project. And so to launch the application, that's you know again in the ODOT CAD standards ODOT folder, there's project tools. And if you use the start menu, that stuff's in the start menu as well. So then, you know, there's this ODOT-CAD, create new project. So we want to launch that. And so that's going to create a new project for us. So when you launch it, you know, this should be the location of your standards folder. If not, you want to make sure you, you have that set to the standards location. This should be set to a project data folder or whatever you guys decided to name the folder to store the project folder structure for the new standards and then this should be your project PCF folder and if it's not at the right location make sure you select that location so now you know you'd want to put in the PID number whatever it is you want to select the district whatever it is and and then the county whatever the main county is and I want to mention when you select the county this GCS gets changed to the appropriate uh, geographic coordinate system for the right zone. So, you know, Ohio has a north zone and a south zone. And, um, you know, when you select the county, it this automatically goes gets set to the right one. So that's one of those project-specific uh, configuration or, or variables that we are setting when you create a project. And uh, there is option to set it to none if you don't want to. But kind of we want to move that direction where all of our files have a corner system assigned to it. That way we can integrate better with GIS systems and, and whatnot. So uh, just want to mention that there's a couple other variables that get set with that project um, configuration, specific configuration. Um, I do want to mention that there's a, we give the ability for an optional description at the end of a, of a PID number. And so that could be used for county route section or whatnot. Um, it's an option. You don't have to use it, but uh, it should be, you know, either all your project created, use it, or all or all don't. Uh, we don't want you know half and half. Um, it's just so each district has you know the option to do that. And same thing with county folders. Some districts, you know, they didn't want a county folder, and some did. So some wanted inside their project data folder to just see all the PID folders, and some wanted them separate separate out by the county folder. So it. it we recommend it's it's all one way or the other, but seeming to how I'm in support, you know, I have both just because I I troubleshoot and and whatnot. So just because you see it here doesn't mean that's what you should do. So um, the county folder is optional, but again, you know, pick one and stick to it. Don't don't flip flop. And then this this bottom part is the optional discipline specific design subfolders. So all the design all the all the DGNs and and um, design files are intended to go inside the design folder in our standard pro folder structure. And so the folder structure you can get more details of that in our CAD standards manual, which is here, um, right, right here, and that gives you all the details and whatnot. So that's that's that, and then you'll see that there's a geopack roadway, and, and it'll go through. All, I don't have time to go through all of those details, but 
you want to check on the discipline specific files that you want if you wanted those and and then you create a new file and it's going to create that file or that project so now you'll see if I go to the product data that that folder was created as well as a PCF file was created for that as well and then if you wanted to add more you can and at a later time you can switch operation to add folders to existing project and you can add those fo folders at a later time okay one last thing I wanted to mention here is now when you open MicroStation with the new standards now that we have these project PCF you have to tell MicroStation which project PCF file to use so when you open you want to make sure that your user is set to .cad and your project is set to whatever project you want to open and that's what tells MicroStation hey use these these very project specific variables so that's something you need to be conscious of when you switch projects and whatnot you want to make sure you have that selected to the right one so you get those variables and when you select that it's going to switch you to the design folder of that project which is pretty nice old standards does not have that project specific stuff so you don't need to worry about that you just want with old standards you want to just make sure you have the right project and user set, which I'll show you here in a, and once it opens up. So you just want to make sure that this is set to the, the user set to ODA, VDA, STD, and the project set to that. And then you can open your projects that way. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is now that you have the folder structure created, when you create files, we do have a standard naming convention, and there is an application that can create and name the files for you. Um, I check out our YouTube channel for a video on that. Um, but and you can also look at that in our our standards manual for more details. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful and getting you guys started. Um, you know if you do need support on our page there is this service request and you can fill out and you know this will come to us in the email and we will we'll answer your request or if you have comments or suggestions use that as well for that um, but hopefully this guys this will help you guys understand how to get started with ODOT projects so um, definitely check out our YouTube channel for for a lot more videos on how to use a lot of the applications that we have. So, so um, see you guys next time in the next video.